Behold my 1966 Oldsmobile Toronado in all its radiant splendor. Let me grab the camera and uh, take you on a little tour and tell a few stories along the way. Come on, let's go. All right, well, got this back in 1997. It was a family trip. We left uh, here in Georgia and uh, drove all the way up to Syracuse, New York uh, with a friend's borrowed trailer. And first time I'd ever towed anything. And I had a tow in a snowstorm because this was uh, lake effect snow right off of, I think it's Lake Erie that's uh, uh, right there that Syracuse is on. And uh, towed it back to Connecticut, where I'm originally from. Went over there for Thanksgiving. And uh, what a trip it was. So uh, let me tell you about the engine here uh, and the uh, a little bit about the car as well. Um, uh, some things it didn't have in its favor. It was a originally a Boston car. And then uh, I don't know if it ever ran in Syracuse, but it spent its life up in New England. Thankfully, it didn't have any worse uh, rot than uh, you would have had on anything else. I mean, it, you know, down here and down there, the same place any of these cars uh, would have had it, but I don't, I don't think the car was cursed. The family, the guys that owned it were, um, the engine, um, they had changed the timing chain on it, had number one plug out and did the foolish thing. Please don't just don't do this. Um, pulled the spark plug out and then stuck a screwdriver in there just so they could know when they had it on you know, top dead center and there are much better ways of finding that at least don't use a screwdriver you know use a plastic straw something don't use a screwdriver uh and anyhow got it all back together and forgot all about it cranked it up with a screwdriver in it and well that was that um you know that destroyed that piston and such and i still have that head um and this does have B heads on it, uh, but that original B head, um, you could see you know, all the imprints of the broken screwdriver on there. And then when they went to get it picked up, uh, the the tow truck um, with its forks was back. Anyhow, old school kind of fork uh, tow truck ripped a big gash in the fender and this is not that same fender i've uh replaced and rebuilt um one of these fenders is a combination of several fenders cut up and welded back together but uh i'm pretty good at that stuff so you can't even really tell um in fact you can't tell um and then a, the do, a dog, uh, all at the same time, like a big golden retriever or some kind of something, jumped up on the windshield all excited and broke the windshield. So uh, anyhow, he sold the car for 450 bucks. Anyhow, I rebuilt, rebuilt this motor back in like 98. And, you know, all this thing has done is just like drive around my neighborhood or where my shop is. And then for probably maybe the last 10 years, it has sat here um, in my in my garage. So um, anyhow, 425, you know, forged uh, crank. Um, I know some of you guys are going to go say something about these valve covers, but, um, you know, I don't care. <laughs> these are much more interesting valve covers these are off like a 73 or a 74 the ones that uh came off of this which i still have but they were all rust pitted and they're just flat they're boring and uh let me tell you i ran a restoration shop and you know i'm tired of restoration and making it pure you know it's your car do what you do what you want to do um so and along those lines you can see all the air conditioning is out of it and let's go take a look back here on our tour 
So, and I've got a couple sets of these things. Um, this is all the original under the, some of it's the under the hood, some of it's the under the dash, and places in between. There is one more box that goes underneath the uh, hood. And um, I am not putting that nonsense back in there. I will come up with some kind of aftermarket uh, solution, maybe just a generic kit. Um, it might be a little tricky because there's the shape of this dash. It is, it goes, it's long and comes down on this big angle, and there's not a lot of room up underneath there. Um, you can see where I welded a plate in there, close all that close all that up um so that might be a a bit of a challenge but you know i'll work it out and worry about that later um so when i got the car you know the main thing was build the motor and um focus on the body work so uh now there's the other mechanic oh and i've got these are uh rebuilt um rebuilt um cv joints up here and in the second video you're going to see uh, the, the second video is going to teach you how to solve some problems that will happen when old cars sit so uh, particularly in regards to the cooling system and freeze plugs and drum brakes and wheel cylinders when they sit for a long time but that is going to be in the second video so let's take a little tour of the interior. You know, while we're in here, let's go ahead and crank her up. Turbo mufflers um, up under here, so just so I can run it. sound of a quadrant sucking in air. You know something's going on. Nothing like it, man. Uh, we've got the awesome drum speedometer, which does work. Um, the clock, I'll, uh, I might try and put a quartz movement in that myself, and if not, I'll, I'll send it off. I do have several sets of all the gauges that uh go in there uh let's see and then i'll just you know i'll blend a new heating and air conditioning system um to work off of these controls um what else do we have he oh i've got an actual wonder bar radio for this um the radio that was in here was a 67 which was like a two-piece it actually had like an external secondary amplifier. I also do have, uh, this is the interior that is original stock to the car, but I do have the deluxe interior that's got the um, door handle uh, so you can open the door from the back seat. And then it has the lighted, you know, has a white light and a red, I think just a reflector uh, on there. And then, the window controls go down in a uh, a tray here as well as i think the seat controls so you see my seat controls are here and i think for the deluxe they go in here i have all that stuff stored um i'd love to be able to find a tilt and telescopic wheel for it but uh they are very expensive uh, let's see. What else can we can we talk about here? Um, door rubber is available. I don't think there's a big pocket that goes down 
in here and i think the door rubber that's available kind of stops right here um you know that's that's okay and um you know for the actual door itself that's available um this one did have the um <coughs> remote mirror uh let's see these big holes here are for the cornering lights which are a really cool feature that uh i think only the oldsmobiles probably the cadillacs had um so when you turn on your signal light um whichever side you turn on the it lights up a big white light um and it uh it's it's quite effective. I had them on the '66 uh, Olds '98 convertible. I had, and we had a Nissan Maxima that had them, and it's it's really cool. Um, I'll just have to figure out how to how to work that out uh, electrically um, with the switch uh, to uh, turn the signal light and turn that on steady. Uh, what else, what else, what else? And, uh, you know, here's your cool, um, turbo hydromatic 425 transmission. I've done nothing to it except maybe reseal, uh, the pan. Like I said, the CV joints were rebuilt. I've got new shocks up front. Um, I will be switching this over to a dual master cylinder, which they had for, uh, came out with in 67 and this is this is your for your uh, switch pitch uh, torque converter. I don't want to pull on it because I don't the, the engine's warm and I want gas going going in there unnecessarily. Um, but uh, what that does is when you get on it, it changes the angle of the uh, blades in the torque converter, and it is like a super burst of power. When I rebuilt this, I did rebuild it. it it's either 10 or 10 and a quarter to one uh, pistons. Whatever this thing had stock in it, that's what it's got. And, uh, man, this thing just pulls like a locomotive. Uh, radiator, uh, definitely be changing uh, that out. That is just to uh, get me in and out of the uh, garage right now. Let's take a look up here at the I'm trying to see which where I can grab it so here's the uh you know the hideaway headlights were you know a cool feature um from the from the 60s and uh you know Corvette held on to that for forever these things are very heavy and whoops they do have um someone has got Oh, cool. Look, I got a T3 there. I'll have to look on the other side and see if I got one. Uh, I'm just curious. Can I get that open? Oh, and I got a T3 there. Awesome. Um, one high beam, one low beam. Um, and it looked like one of them was, one or two of them was a Delco. So um, that's cool. Um, there are electric actuators now available for it, but there's something like a ridiculous... It's either 300 or 600. It, I remember when I searched a few weeks ago and saw them when I was thinking about getting this mothballed project going again. Um, uh, I was happy to see that there were actuators and then <laughs> really disappointed when I saw the price. So... Um, I might see if I can come up with something from, you know, McMaster car or, you know, just, just get some sort of 12 volt, uh, actuator, uh, that I can, um, just fabricate something myself instead of, uh, uh, instead of paying somebody else, uh, you know, for, for their, you know, for their, all their design and markup and all that such, I will just put some sweat equity into it myself. So while we're up here, let's take a look at this. And this was a gift from my wife. And the 1966 Olds Toronado was the 1966 Motor Trend Car of the Year. So it is really cool to have this 
and uh, you know, there's a couple. Of the uh, I'd really love to have the dealer manuals for this. I have them for my '74 Cutlass, um, but I'd love to have it for this. But man, the last time I they were an obscene price. But they're the ones that have you know all the colors and the fabric samples and and everything else. So. Um, yeah, if you can find yourself a copy of this and you have one, you have a Toronado, this is a nice thing uh, to have. So a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, the oil pan on the on these, six quart, sort of. Um, it was really annoying is if you had an Oldsmobile Toronado or you were building one, putting one together and you needed an oil pan, trying to find an oil pan for these things was next to impossible because uh, they are technically a six quart oil pan. But here's the thing. You see, there's a double sump and there's no drain on this one. And that little um, relief right there that shape right there is because the axle, that is to clear the axle going underneath there. Well, what happens is you put six quarts in, you're only going to get five back out because a quart of dirty oil stays up there. So, you know, if you could, it would be a good idea. And I wish I thought of this, you know, some time ago when I was putting it back together. Uh, put a drain plug in there as as well but you've only still got down in here five quarts uh they just they had to make it skinny because the transmission comes down in there and kind of squeezes you know it takes up a lot of room so they had to make the pan uh deep deep and tall um, so it's got a crank scraper and there's also a windage tray, um, underneath the, uh, crankshaft, but this, uh, crank scraper, the whole reason all that was in there is because the oil was so close to the crank and then it was still picking up stringy snots of oil. So that crank scraper is to break those snots of oil, um, you know, which, get on that's resistance it throws it out of balance it's a drag on the reciprocating assembly uh so that's all about that this is really good um let you see how this is just basically a turbo 400 you know, splitting you know just bent in half going right into a differential um and this shows i'm gonna go show you the trunk here in a second but i've got stuff in it so um some of the actual parts um this uh spare tire it <laughs> goes down on that angle down in that down in that well so um let's take a take another walk around here i showed you body stuff already um uh, more good news bad news the um gas tank on this thing it was bad when i got it and you know it, it wasn't really repairable and i'd spent you know years off and on just looking every now and then for a gas tank and just just couldn't find one they didn't make a reproduction one well they now do make a reproduction one um it's just like 700 bucks so um i'll have to see what happens with that but that i might have to bite the bullet on and um get the uh you know just it, if that's the only one out there you know that's that's what it is um so in the meantime i have this little one gallon uh little tank to scoot around in uh again the uh dual snorkel air cleaner um, and then there's the, uh, center decal thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, another cool, it's cool, but it led to these things rusting out. Um, these are the drains for the rear back here. Um, uh, I guess just the way for whatever reason that's how it was designed and there's a louvered panel that goes here and i guess to maybe there was a ceiling problem or something with the water coming down this this fast back slope 
and they couldn't keep it out of the trunk, so they gathered it here and then routed it, you know, down, around, and out. Well, man, these things would crack, break, um, you know, freeze, get full of tree trash and stuff and rot out trunks. And this one did have a rotted out trunk. I fixed that, um, you know, like what, almost 30 years ago. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I guess that's it on the, you know, on the, anything major on the walk around. Oh, I do have a, um, you know, it's got the speaker in the back. Uh, here's another dashboard, uh, cover instrument panel side cover. I've got also the rear, uh, defroster, uh, package for it, which is basically, it's just a fan. It's just a fan that blows, <laughs> it just sucks air from the trunk and blows it on the rear window. I guess the idea is that the trunk would heat up or just maybe air moving would, uh, you know, def defog it. I doubt it works all that great, but it's just, it's cool that I have it. And of course I'll have to get the, uh, get the seats redone. So, um, I think that's, uh, that's the highs and the lows of it. Nope. Nope. There's something else. There's always something else. Um, I'm not sure how good this, you can tell the color. I'm going to hold this gray t-shirt up so we can have some kind of reference any of you guys that ever did photography you know you have a what they call a gray card that's you know 18 percent reflectance and then you calibrate to the gray card in the photo and then all the other colors will fall into place but um this is frost green so this is the only original paint left on besides, well, the nose and, and the hood. I've got the hood off, um, but it's in decent shape here. Uh, so this is paint code ZZ. Let's go take a look at that. So there we are right there. ZZ paint. So... Um, I do have a sample of, I re, there's a uh, paint code K, 60, 1966 paint code GM uh, K. Uh, and I think it was the same throughout the whole line is this, um, uh, what is it? Ocean, ocean mist. It's a kind of a tealy turquoise bluey green. And I'm because I paint I painted uh, I painted a '66 Toro that color, and uh, man, it's it's pretty awesome. So I don't know. I'm torn. Obviously, got you know a few <laughs> a few steps before I have to worry about that um, finish. Um, finish this back here. I do have the rear uh glass for it so uh, i got the rear original glass i've got all this um i've got my window motors i'll you know have to get those redone or replaced and i just have to make sure that uh you know years ago that front windshield was available i need to make sure that it uh that it still is uh they were about 300 dollars like 20 years ago i don't know what's going on with those things now well, I hope you enjoyed this first video in the series of my 1966 Oldsmobile uh, Toronado, uh, the walk around and a few little stories on it and options and so on and so forth. So um, if you liked it, go ahead and press down on that gas and kick in that switch pitch torque converter, like, subscribe, comment, share buttons and all of that stuff please 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 it really helps me out and um i will see you on the next one thank you